Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Next Gen Hotel Cast. This is James Bennett, the social hotel guy, with you once again. And, of course, with me is Scott Roloff. Scott, how are you doing? Very good. How's everybody here? I, I think we're doing fine. I, I We haven't done this in a while, so I'm kind of excited. It's the uh, first podcast of 2013 for us. So uh, that, that's kind of exciting, right, Scott? Yeah, we were very busy over the holidays, and we kept saying, okay, pretty soon we're going to do a podcast, and this was <laughs> the first time we were able to get it. But we uh, got a great guest speaker today, and we're real excited about that. We are, we are. Before we go to that, though, I just wanted to ask you a question. For uh, years now, we've talked about the company that cannot be named. <laughs> You're no longer with them. That's right, so we can name them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, be my guest. Please. I wasn't allowed to out. talk about Extended Stay Hotels, also known as Extended Stay America, because it was against policy to uh, oh. to discuss my hotel while I was with them. So That's <laughs> we, right. So for kept, all of you that wondered. <laughs> <laughs> we said that this mysterious company that I work for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Although it wasn't from lack of trying, because I know that you, you put out the Laurel Branch a couple of times. And yep, yep. I got shut tried down to get by a shut senior. Down. Shut down by the man. Shut down. Yeah. And actually, it was a senior VP of marketing. She uh, yeah. didn't want me talking about uh, the company. So I said, okay, I won't mention a word about them. <laughs> because it, we both know Extended Stay is so good at their marketing and advertising. <laughs> well, you, you guys seen that new Extended Stay commercial? They are starting to do... TV commercials after oh. such of a long time. I haven't. I. I mean, I don't think I've seen one yet because they. I haven't either. That was the pulp joke. <laughs> no, they. They actually have started to do that. I mean, it's Amazing. really funny. They. They are planning a, uh, kind of a, rebranding, but they're still using the same name. But they're they're just launching a big, TV campaign, and they're starting in California. And they're starting it in the hotels that they do remodels in, and they're moving through the country. Now, whether or not the current ownership group is going to keep them for the long haul or flip them in a few years remains to be seen. You know, people are always tight-lipped about that. My theory yeah. is my theory is, putting money into the hotel and trying to, to boost its name is not going to hurt them either way. Whatever their plans are, it's the smart move, so... We'll see if you know. See if they can really turn it around because it started getting it started getting a bad reputation from some people. Well, well, I'll tell you, Scott and I both worked for Exeter Stay at one point or another in our career, actually simultaneously for a while, and uh, it it had a great potential, and I think it still does. So, uh, mm -hmm. if any of you Extended Stay people are out there listening, we more power to you. It's a great product. If you get back to the old days with that like new condition in the rooms and the uh, attention to inventory and processes, uh, I, I really think that you've got a winner there. So good luck to you yeah, this day, although you lost Scott Roloff. <laughs> yeah, they, well, it was, it was a good good move for me, but uh, I think they've got a lot of potential, and, uh, and uh, they really have always been there for me twice now in my, my life. Uh, they've been a great job, so glad to be there. <laughs> Fantastic. So let, let's introduce Jim. Um, Scott, why don't you do do the honor since you you uh, brought Jim on to the podcast? Why don't you let us know how you found him and, and who he is? And uh, Jim, welcome to the podcast as well. Hey, thanks, James and Scott. Appreciate okay. It. Well, I met Jim at uh, through social media, and uh, and we just I just reached out and said I'd love to get an instructor's viewpoint on our show. And turns out the hotel I'm with now is just right across the street from their headquarters, Tarrant County College, and I'm at the Omni in downtown Fort Worth, so I see that headquarters every day, so it's kind of funny. But uh, my daughter is also uh, a member of that college. She's in the uh, uh, law enforcement program, and uh, but it's always good to, you know, it's a good school, and it's good to talk to um, fellow educators. I did teach in a trade school for a little while, and uh, also, I've always had a passion for the hotel business, so it's good to good to have Jim on board. Great, thanks, Scott. I'd like to mention also, you know, I'm not the traditional um, educator. I actually have um, 18 years of experience before I started in um, education, um, about four or five years ago, and I continued working in a consulting fashion, and also have my own um, business as well too, supporting restaurants. Uh, so uh, it's a little different um, context than most educators out there, I believe. Yeah. Absolutely, and and the the fact that you're uh, dealing with the restaurant end of hospitality is also very very cool. Um, that's not something you see very often as well. 
Right. So very very exciting. How, how did that happen? That dual, uh, uh, you know, dual experience path there. You're talking about in regards to the the, the are you rest- restaurant tour and hotels. Gotcha. So you know, traditionally, um, schools are have a, a name, and the name is uh, the major is usually hospitality. Um, degree or you have a hotel and restaurant um, degree. So in the last two years, I changed it from hospitality degree for this reason. I would go to career fairs recruiting teachers, and um, we would have a whole bunch of nurses coming over to us and asking us, um, hey, how do I start teaching a hospitality um, program? I'm like, why are you over here? That's what I'm asking my head. And I came to realize, you know, they thought that we were hospitals. We would never have any recruits coming over um, looking to teach our program. And then um, I would also (laughs) be going to classrooms and um, introducing myself, recruiting students into our program. um, People would be, uh, students would be saying, gosh, I I work at Chili's. I work at the Omni. I had no idea there was a hotel and restaurant program. So about two years ago, I changed um, it around just um, for really marketing reasons more than anything. Fantastic. Scott, you were going to say something? Yeah, I've seen that with the uh, hospitals as well. We say hospitality, and it seems to get uh, across Absolutely. the hospitals a lot. One, one of the weird things is, you know, we market ourselves as a hospitality podcast, and uh, if you were to Google it, most of the podcasts that come up have to do with hospitals. So. That right. Interesting. <laughs> I guess that's a common thing, common thing. Yeah. Yeah. So within our program, we have um, roughly about 17 courses. A significant amount of them are focused on the hotel side of business, and um, as well as the restaurant side and the special event side of our business. So it encompasses the whole industry. And then within each um, subject matter, um, I have a subject matter expert who actually has experience in that particular field. So we have somebody who teaches special events, for example, who comes from the special events industry, not a professional ed- educator. And I, of course, teach the restaurant classes because that's my experience. We have somebody else who has experience in the hotel side of the business. So that way, the students are getting as much practical experience as possible in the classroom and shared you know, experience and stories and everything that you two guys like you two have um, lived out there. Yeah, absolutely, and that that's very important. We actually spoke with uh, a former protege of Scott's just fairly recently, and one of the discussions we had was it doesn't matter if you're taking the the career path that Scott and I did, where we started at the bottom and worked our way, you know, struggling up, or if you take the hospitality management path, um, you know, getting a, a, an education, but you have to do one, and it's it's just so many years of required background before you get to a place where there's a competency and a um, a, a degree of, of of feeling that you're in place or, or that you, you've got a handle on things. Wouldn't you say that, Scott? Yes, I would. Jim, you were going to say something, I think. Yeah, you know, here's the deal is what I used to tell my students. You know, there's really, we only teach two classes that when you walk across the threshold leaving class today, that um, you'll be able to actually apply. One of them is um, anything that we teach around financials. I mean, you know, you can go from the book to the um, the hotel to the restaurant to special events and apply the understandings you got from financial state. Other class would be the legal classes. It's not entirely black and white, and there's a lot of gray area, but you can apply the concepts. But when it comes to management and human resources, and I believe that's what you're alluding to as far as the competence and skills, and there's only one way to get those skills, and it's trial and error in the real world, right? No, that's absolutely yeah. true. Absolutely true. But you, you, it's not a job you can jump into, as, as I think our point. Um, whether you have years of experience or the degree, you need to have something to, as, a, as a stepping off point. Um, I, you, we see time and again, Scott uh, and I deal a lot or have dealt a lot with limited service in our careers. And limited service is, is without a doubt, uh, notorious for recruiting people into a GM position or a hotel management position to have little or no experience either in the management side or in the um, hospitality side. And the result is almost always a nightmare. Uh, wouldn't you say, Scott? Yeah, if someone's moved into position too uh, too quickly without the foundation, that can really be setting them up for failure. Uh, you have to you have to have that. Uh, well, you know, getting some formal education would help a lot, getting that foundation down, and and just some good coaching one on one with somebody. But so many times, limited service hotels are so stretched in their staff and so tight in the budget. It's uh, sink or swim training. Here's the keys to this uh, hotel. Now run it, <laughs> and you figure it out. Here's, a, yeah. here's and, 10 million binders to read. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and, you know, it's not that it never works. You know, I, I'm thinking right now of a hotel in West Texas that the uh, head housekeeper, you know, the manager quit on them, and, and they didn't have anyone. The owner lived out of state. And all of a sudden, this uh, 20-year-old head housekeeper was uh, promoted to general manager. Ouch. And she did fantastic. Huh. <laughs> I mean, it does happen once in a yep. while, but it's, uh, it's almost always an accident in my, in my experience. But uh, we'll get into the questions. We'll find out a little bit more about what Jim has to think about hospitality in general. Uh, we do need to take a quick break. We're going to have a promo from Next Gen Hospitality, of course, which is the sponsor of the podcast. And we will be right back. To maximize your internet presence and marketing, it is necessary to take a Next Gen approach. Next Gen Hospitality Solutions will guide you through the vital world of social media management. Social media is the newest and perhaps most innovative and vital form of marketing to come along in decades. Allow Next Gen Hospitality Solutions to take the mystery out of internet marketing and maximize your internet market sales. Call us today at 1-806-416-1654. And remember, a Next Gen Hospitality Solution is the only solution that makes sense. All right, and welcome back. Again, we've got Jim Traster. And, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand this off to you. Uh, I know we've got a few questions to ask Jim, and and uh, we don't want to waste his time on a weekend. For those of you that are wondering, we, we pulled Jim in on a, a Saturday evening at dinner time to do this. So thank you very much for that, Jim. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate the invite. Okay, well, the, the first question we have is, uh, could you tell us, Jim, what's the biggest lesson – that you've learned while teaching? Uh, you know, it's, it's not that much different from um, the real world, meaning real world outside the world of education, the world that you guys come from, the industry of um, hospitality, and, um, in the sense that, you know, uh, in order to be a great teacher and um, run the classroom, run a program like we have today, um, you're always um, trying to satisfy two different departments. One department's called administration in the world that you guys work in, that's the headquarters. And then, and then on the other side, you're trying to satisfy your own employees and your customers. And customers in our business are the students, and my employees are my adjuncts. So you're always tied between those two and trying to satisfy them, which to me is kind of interesting. When I first went into teaching, I thought it would just be solely focused on teaching, and that's all I would have to do is execute and um, um, teaching and be great at it um, every single day. And then there's a lot more to it than I anticipated um, and, and making sure that uh, all the paperwork's done, we have systems in place, and everybody's happy on both in both camps um, with administration as well as in the classroom. And then um, the students in, uh, as well, too, you know, uh, what you got me thinking about, Scott, is this, is that I mean, I'm not sure, I assume you guys have been on the operations side in the past in the business. I'm trying to find an analogy is that, you know, when you walk into your hotel or you walk into your restaurant, um, every, every employee is a reflection of how, how you are. I'll never forget 20 years ago, I, I walked into one of my operations and nobody was smiling. And of course that pissed me off. And then I had to look at myself and it was a realization that time I wasn't smiling. So they weren't smiling. So if um, folks aren't happy um, in our classrooms, it's the same same story. You know, we set the example as teachers, um, and it's all reflected in our own students um, as well as the growth um, in our programs. That's a, that's a very true statement. This is, a, and I, I guess it's the same with, with teaching, um, that it, it's an industry of passion, and if it's not there, it's obvious. Yeah, uh, that's that's, that's uh, There's no, no substitute for passion in this industry. And uh, to answer your question, yes, Scott and I have both done 20 plus years in uh, in in management or or in operations. Wow. So gotcha. uh, yeah, we're wow. we're kind of uh, cool. old hats at this. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we've got another question here for you, and uh, this one I, I think is is fantastic because we've asked this before and uh, we've never done it from an uh, asked it from an educator standpoint but what's your key piece of advice to a new hotel and restaurant student well, number one goes to my mind and i meet with um prospective students coming into our program and the first thing i ask them what is it that you want to do and once they decide on what they want to do i suggest to them go find the person who's the best in the world at it go read about them and then let's find somebody locally for you to get in touch with before you even crack the books open um, and ask them some questions. You know, what does it take to get to where you're at? Um, what's the quality of life like if that's important to somebody? Um, what's, it, what's the education background that's required of this? Because there's no sense entering the program um, and trying to get straight A's 
um, if it's not necessary. And I'll give you an example. I know you guys are familiar with this. I have a lot of students coming into the program looking to get into special events. It's one of the few segments in our industry that you do not need to have a, 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 a formal education. And actually, it's one of the few segments in the industry, as you guys know, um, to do special events. You don't need a lot of money if you want to start off small. You don't have to own any assets. So I use that as examples um, with several students that, you know what, let's start at the end. Before you start with reading a book that's written by another professor that learned from another professor, let's start with somebody who's doing it in the real world. And I'm not the special event expert, but let's go find somebody. Um, I'll use one of my connections to connect to them with. Um, so that's the first question um, I ask them. What is it that you want to do? And then let's find somebody who's actually doing it so we can um, get a great path, smooth path, uh, for you to take to get to where your, your dream is. Um, Scott, I don't, I don't know if you had this experience, but I actually had somebody do one of those uh, little sit-down interviews with me in Amarillo. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I thought it was really strange at the time, but, you know, I put aside 30 minutes and sat down and talked to a student. And, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Now I know, Jim, maybe you, your hand was there, one of your peers. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, uh, I, I, I at first thought it was, um, a practical joke of one of my compatriots. Ha, really? But, uh, <laughs> that was us. Yeah. That, that was me playing a practical joke on you before meeting you tonight. Yeah. There you was, go. You know, there I you just, go. I just shake my head. And as you guys know from the industry, you know, um, at our ages, I'm, I'm sure I'm around the same ages as you guys, is that, um, it's a pleasure to have a student come in or have anybody really fascinated about what the work that you do. And I have more success stories of students getting job offers as a result of that. that um, just going out there and interviewing, just to gather information. It's amazing. I mean, as you guys know, the, if somebody gave you a phone call, you'd be more than willing to help them out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's good. Well, let me ask uh, the next question. How would you explain the topic, hotel and restaurant industry, to a newcomer? Well, the first thing that goes to my mind, Scott, is this, is that, and I, I share this in the Introduction to Hospitality course that I teach every single semester, is if you have a hobby, no matter what it is, if it's music, if it's a sporting event, um, if it's just serving people in your life, there's a segment in our industry that will support your um, desire, without question. And I often use one as um, off the wall as the Blue Man Group, uh, and I show them a, a classified ad looking for a catering manager. So if you were fascinated by the Blue Man Group, they were looking for a catering manager up in uh, New York. Um, I guess that's where they're based. So whatever you're fascinated about, as we always hear um, when we're younger, try to tie that um, um, to the work that you do for the rest of your life because we spend so much time. So figure out what you love, and then I guarantee you there's a segment of our industry that um, will sync up with what you love to do. Well, that's good. That's very yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just thinking sorry, about the Blue Man off. Group. Yeah, yeah, like wow, catering manager for Blue Man Group. That I never would have even imagined. But yeah, no, that's that's very cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so let, let's see what. This is a good one because you know that we're talking about passion, and I'll tell you, there are days when you uh, look at the hotel and go, really. So uh, I guess the question becomes, how do you stay interested in teaching? What keeps yeah, for you myself passionate? Is, um yeah, two things. I'm always trying to improve without question. Improve to me means making a difference beyond just teaching the subject matter, making a difference in certain students' lives. And then hearing, now I've been there four years, so I have several students that have um, graduated. They've moved up in management. Like I have a gentleman who's in charge of sponsorships over at um, Six Flags, and he's in a new position. So he shares that with me. I have other students at university. So just like you guys, you know, you've had employees in the past. They get back to you and give you a pat on the back and say thank you for what you've done for me. And um, so, you know, that's always a pleasure. And, and, and it's reconfirming to let you know that you're on the right path. One thing um, we don't have an education um, like you, we do in the industry is you don't our report card in industry is the P and L and um, education to me my report card is how are my students doing after they leave the program and so when I hear that from students it's um you know just creates some um, that much more enthusiasm to keep on teaching and letting me know that I'm doing the right thing. It's awesome. That's really cool. I especially like that you threw P and L in there. We actually had a discussion not too recently, um, but maybe a year ago when Scott and I were were. Uh, commiserating about the fact that so many hotel managers and owners can't read a profit and loss statement <laughs> or, or right? even know what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, huh. it, it's, it's really rough out there, wouldn't you say, Scott? Huh. Oh, yeah. I, I love hearing that because the two things that we focus on our program that I, 
over and over with the students is if you want to separate yourself out from being an hourly employee where you are today, if that's your case in management, is do these two things. Learn how to communicate to groups. And then number two is understand the financials and understand what they're telling you so you can act on them. And that's what I'm hearing from you guys as well, too. No, absolutely. It, you, you will definitely make your mark if you can master the financials. Mm -hmm. I had a hotel manager just tell me the other day that uh, she was being asked to uh, train someone to be her assistant, um, basically train her replacement, really. But the, the person had, you know, no idea of any financials or star reports or acronyms, <laughs> AD, didn't know what ADR was. It was like, wow. there's no way. I, I, you that's can't awesome. even start at square one. <laughs> cool. And I'm, I'm smiling because that's exactly what we teach our students. And now I'm going to use what you just said as a testimony um, to uh, what we're sharing with them, that you've got to know the terminology. Yeah. got to know the terminology. It's, Hotels it's, like uh, acronyms too. They do. It's it's amazing, and and they don't change from brand to brand. That's the other thing. I mean, you know, uh, uh, a yeah. PMS is a PMS, and uh, you know, Star Report's always a Star Report. You know, you EBITDA is always EBITDA. You, you got to know what you're talking about, and if you do, uh, you'll promote fast. So you can you can play that snippet for your class if you want. <laughs> gotcha. I will. I was thinking I would ask you two guys what's your advice you would have for hotel and restaurant students. And I, I believe I just got it from you. Yes, to write oh, absolutely. That, like we said, if you don't want to spend eight years getting experience, you should get a degree in hotel management. I mean, that's there's the only two ways to do it. Uh, and and mm -hmm. I think we've seen people succeed both ways. It's definitely yep. easier to start in the industry and work your way up. It takes longer, but it's definitely yeah. easier because your breadth of experience is better. But yeah. Um, the details are what make a fine manager from making an okay manager. So, you know, mm. and uh, definitely well, understanding the, the financials is huge. Understanding the, the metrics is, is even huger. Scott? I was going to say what I like about the classroom is it's, it's a much faster way to get information because there's no such thing as a dumb question when you're a student. But when you get out there, you say something in a board meeting and people are going to look like you're crazy and, and why are you wasting our time? You know, that's, that's what you're going right. to get. So you want to know these basics before you get to that point. And uh, right. I love, love that classroom atmosphere too from yep. the time that I was teaching. It's, it's just a good, uh, good time to uh, be uh, learning things with other people that don't know anything either and <laughs> form a lot of friendships and during that time too. Let, let's throw a caveat, another, another uh, a, a good reason to stay in the classroom is that I would say 70%, especially in the mid-scale, middle market hotels, um, of the owners or, or of the even some of the uh, ownership groups um, have little or no experience within the industry. So there's always this perception mm -hmm. that I can learn it on the job or someone can show me. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the level of GM, sometimes there aren't resources above you. And uh, Scott's right. had this experience where your regional or your VP might be asking you, hey, how do I do this? So um, definitely the metrics and financials are important. It, it, you, you, you can't go wrong by mastering those. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Scott, I think you had a related question, right? Well, the uh, flip side of what you like about teaching is what drives you crazy? What, what drives you uh, mad about teaching? <laughs> well, I, get, I believe I have to be real even if um, my peers end up hearing this or at my admin. You know, the, in, the, in, the, in our world, the world that we come from in the industry, you know, if things aren't going good with um, one of your employees, um, you can make a decision how long they're going to be with you, if any. Well, in the classroom, um, it doesn't work like that. And, um, you know, we're dealing with volumes of people as well, too. And um, so sometimes, you know, um, you'd like to turn that um, nozzle off and, um, 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 and make a decision about a student. But, um, you know, in the world of education, you got to appeal to everybody. That's just the way it goes. Um, so, you know, that, that's a struggle for me sometimes, um, without question. It has been in the past. Um, but as I've come to learn how to um, firmly communicate what my standards are in the classroom, um, it's made it become much easier um, as far as being able to um, kind of pick and choose which students um, come to my classrooms and say like that. Yeah, teaching is really a, a two-way street. Um, it involves the teacher and the student equally. If the student doesn't uh, apply themselves and kind of follow the rules for being a good learner, um, it's really hard for the teacher to do their job. Yes, I, I, what I was really alluding to uh, is really not, 
it's really even not so much the motivation, but um, um, behaviors. Um, I'm really just shocked at the behaviors I've seen when I first started. Um, and this, these are folks not coming from industry, but coming up through the um, high schools um, into our program. I was just shocked. And so it took me a year or two to have um, enough leverage to start setting the standard and the way it needs to be in a classroom mm -hmm. regarding behaviors. Oh, yeah. but it really was a shock. I mean, it had been 20 years at least since I've been in school and exposed. So the, there's this younger generation coming up that uh, they have different ways about them and uh, maybe, you know, just a different way of doing things. And a lot of them, you know, I found in my world, a lot of them just haven't been exposed to what yep. really hospitality looks like. Right. And I think the biggest factor we see is the cell phones and the texting, how that is really just come into the hotel environment i mean it's 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 funny but uh you know a lot of them just don't think nothing of pulling out their phone and starting texting right in right in the view of the public it's right. such a no-no yeah yeah you know, i've often felt like a teacher i had a hotel where i had to have a drawer where everyone put their cell phone at the beginning of the, the day huh. and uh it's I just know. it blows my mind I'll, i was disciplining someone the other day a final, you know, is there, this is a person that's a repeat offender, and they pull out their phone and start answering a text while I'm talking to them. And I said, well, you've got a choice. You can finish that and leave, or you could put it away, and you're still probably going to leave. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it blows my mind that, that you know, and, and I, I guess it's our fault as a society that, that we've made these uh, instruments, you know, completely – um, necessary to everyday life, but you know, Scott and I came up when uh, we were still using ledger books and doing hand audits with a pencil and an eraser. So um, I could tell you, it's not necessary in the hotel. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a fun fun thing. But no, I, I think your frustration is valid too, because we do as managers have a lot more control over who or what people we mentor to and 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 we guide. Uh, whereas in a, in a school, um, everyone has the benefit of an education. So, yep. I, I don't know how I would deal with that, being a control freak that I am. So, okay. Yeah, I really like what you guys said. Is, is a lot of it has to do with just exposure. You know, what's the proper way to be dressed in the classroom? How do you dress other mm -hmm. uh, folks that are, happen to be your peers, for example, um, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. So it's really about that. So that's our job, expose them and share with them how to behave. And, and I think you kind of answered this next question um, already, but uh, the major focus of your teaching now, it, I, I guess you're, you're leaning towards restaurant management, is that right? Well, we're um, a hotel and restaurant program, but we've, um, in the last two years, um, I've organized the, the project matter that we share with our students, more so leaning on the restaurant side of the the reason being is um, the, the forecast from the National Restaurant uh, Association is for Texas to lead the country um, again this year in restaurant growth, which translates into you know additional jobs in the restaurant business. And we happen to be in a place called Tarrant County, um, County, and um, where the Cowboy State is, and there's significant growth in restaurants um, specifically. So the majority of jobs are there. But it doesn't well, we still teach hot the hotel side of our business, the special event side of our business as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, when you think about it, there's just a restaurant everywhere you look. I mean, they're just popping up all over the place. So the chances oh, yeah. of job opportunities in a restaurant, um, there's there's large numbers. So, but they're still closely related being in a hotel and a restaurant. And, yeah. and I know yeah. my hotel's got like five restaurants in it, so it's yeah. very combined. That's an amazing hotel. Yeah. So um, the next question would be, is there anything we haven't covered that you want to get across about being a hotel and restaurant instructor? Yeah, first of all, I guess it's, it's just so rewarding um, without question and, um, and, and, and be sharing with students. And I find it to be no different in many ways than in the work world once you become a mature manager, as you guys will understand this example. And when you first, at least when I first start, started teaching as well as in management, it's about teaching skills. But as time goes on, I find myself making – be more focused on making a difference in that person's life, which I know will help them be much more successful in their careers. And I find that to be so true in um, teaching. So when I see a student who's struggling with academics, I'm, I'm not addressing the academics just like I wouldn't address the 
skills right away in the industry. I'm um, addressing that person as a whole person and finding out, hey, what's going on in your world um, first. I believe the people from industry would just really, really would enjoy it. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I will say that, you know, at least from the hotel end of things, uh, the job becomes to a great extent your life because uh, hotel management is a 24 hour a day seven day a week 365 day responsibility not to say that you're going to be working those hours thank god but um it still is uh it's 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 overawing sometimes you know the burnout level and burnout yeah. factor is, is huge so uh let, let me ask you, you in, in, oh yeah it's it's uh you think you're working hard and then all of a sudden it's like uh when did when did when do i stop working Where's the free time? <laughs> but, and and that, that's what I want to ask you about, too. We want to know more about Jim as, as a person. But before I do, let me ask you real quick. Um, a person finishes your program, and they've got, you know, their, is it an associate's degree or? Correct. Yeah, we have an okay. associate's and, degree, and then we have three certificates in our program. Okay. And they're looking for a job where, because a lot of hoteliers don't know this, where do you tell them to look and network online, for example? So as I was sharing with the class the other day, um, it's pretty difficult for us to be attracted to four seasons in the West and to our um, type of, you know, we're really second tier college, right, in the system. Um, so our, our game plan is this. We've partnered, like we're located in Arlington, Texas. We partnered um, strongly with the Arlington Convention Visitor Bureau, which is known as Experience Arlington. I have no less than seven or eight students down there right now. I've been volunteering down there for the last two or three years. Is as you guys know, and everybody's listening to this, in the hotel side of the business, every single hotel in the city is connected with those folks, and they all come through there. They all know everybody there. So I, I use them as a mini career fair down there. Then there's some other networking that I have them do. There's a, what's called a Certified Tourism Ambassador Program that it existed on um, it really had a lot of momentum when the Super Bowl came here to Texas. Um, just like in the Olympics, you have a significant amount of volunteers that support the Olympics. Well, we needed that for the Super Bowl when it came to Arlington. So all of, I had pushed as many students as I could to get into the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program and go through the seminars. We had everybody from dishwashers to um, the mayors of cities taking them on those seminars. And then they have um, networking events that visit um, hospitality venues throughout the Metroplex here. And that way you have an opportunity to be sitting next to people from the Omni or at the, from the Worthington or from the Four Seasons um, at networking events and also in the classroom. So that's been our game plan. And now, since I've been there four years, now it's just about a phone call for me to get a student a job. It's, it's a no-brainer at this point because um, we have um, strong um, alumni out there. And, so the, and then several students now, they go on to a four-year school, which is awesome, which is awesome. Those students that want um, to do something else in their life. That's really good advice because that is key in our industry. Um, a handshake or a phone call from someone can make all the difference. You know, there's uh, hcareers.com, which is a great website, yep. but yep. I've seen people that have put literally hundreds of resumes out and, and then yep. just gotten a phone call from an associate they've worked with before, and there's a job writing on that phone call. Mm, so. Yes, Personal networking is huge in our industry. What, what yeah. do you say, Scott? Yeah, in fact, I was going to ask uh, Jim. Um, do you do you talk about the, the the finding a job? Do you talk about like the resume process, the interview process? Is that part of your program with the students? Yeah, we have something that is referred to as the practicum, which essentially is like an internship program the last semester. But I really do everything I can not to wait till then. Um, right. When I was answering. James' question a couple minutes ago um, about them getting the job that they want. It really starts the very first semester, or if they're introducing me, introduced to me before the semester starts, I talk about getting a job then. And mm -hmm. I'll give you guys an example of some different advice I believe we give that um, somebody else might not give. You guys will get it because you're from the industry. Is uh, I had a student, a very mature student, been working for, for a certain company for about 20 years, similar kind of industry. Uh, long story short, the deal was she wanted, I said to her, uh, let's say her name is Susie, I can't, for privacy reasons, I can't mention students' names. I said, Susie, um, what's your goal? And she says, well, to get out of here, Sue's piece of paper so I can go work for the Marriott and become a GM there someday. I said, well, you know, the, the fastest path to that, in my mind, would be not getting a piece of paper and studying here, but first get a job at um, one of the lower tier hotels out there, um, you know, value-oriented hotels, because they're going to allow you to have a job there. You'll be exposed to the front desk, you'll be exposed to housekeeping, you'll be exposed to maintenance. 
and you will only have to delay your academic uh, degree award um, by one semester. And then you'll be leaving here with two years of experience and a degree. And now it'll be easy for the married to which is exactly what happened um, for her. Um, so that, that's, that's what I suggest right from the get-go. If you're coming to our place to just get a piece of paper and you think that's what's going to get your job, um, it doesn't work like that in life. It doesn't work like that in the work world. You, you still need to change something about yourself um, through that path of um, gaining that piece of paper. And, and what James was just saying is uh, networking with people individually that are in the industry can help you so much. I mean, just, just having an association with somebody, oh, yep. yeah, I know so-and-so. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the statistics are, but I, I know it must boost a candidate's chances by like twenty times from just going in cold. I mean, it's it just that little bit of a warm introduction yep. opens the doors, and then it's on you to uh, wow them in the interview. But at least uh, you know, getting those introductions through networking, and you can network through social media. You can net network through uh, going to hospitality events. There's uh, you know the the chamber and the visitor and convention center doing things all the time so that you can partner with people in podcasts. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can do yep. to network in the industry. Uh, yeah, and you know, as to Scott's point about social media, I, I am I take it back by how many students do not utilize it for um, business networking. Um, it's what I've discovered. Um, and like it's just, as you two guys know, it's just so powerful, so powerful to reach up um, amongst the team beyond who you'd even interview with. It's just so easy these days. But, um, that's something we're trying to push, but um, it's a little slow process than I thought it would be. Yeah, it, it's uh, the industry at large is slow to uh, encompass it, but you know, my the cornerstone of my company was social media, so it enabled me to do what I do. And uh, I, I'm a full full advocate. If you look at the larger brands now, they're starting to encompass it as well. And uh, it's going to become something that's a requirement, even at the front desk level, I'm sure, in the future, that you have some interaction with the hotel or the company's social media. So, might as well get used to it now. <laughs> it's definitely coming. And, uh, you know, the, the other caveat I'd give, you know, to our listeners is uh, if you're going to use your social media for branding yourself or for marketing yourself, uh, you might want to stay away from using your personal social media um, accounts and create one that's specifically for your professional world um, or just learn to censor yourself because that's the number one problem with social media is that it's self-censored and and most of you don't have nearly as good a grasp on self-censoring as you think you do so uh, keep that in mind I, I've stopped from hiring people because of their social media so just just so you're aware um, all right Jim before we let you go real quick, why don't you tell us something. If, if you're not teaching, and uh, what, what's your favorite thing to do on a Saturday afternoon? Besides uh, talking to us, of course. I wasn't doing it today. to be with my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I'm preparing for a broadcast with you guys. <laughs> um, you know, it's spending time with my son. I got a great young son. He's eight years old. And we do Cub Scouts, football, and all the usual good stuff. Remote control, toys, and all that good stuff. That's my favorite you know that's uh that's a key family's got to be key it, it's interesting scott i don't know very yes, many sir. single hoteliers do you single hoteliers yeah most of them have families right i can't well, think of one actually I, I i'm finding a lot of them um where i work now there's a lot of young ones still uh you know uh, up and coming around. that's true that's yeah true. a lot yeah, of up and yeah, coming yeah yeah but uh, definitely, you know, when, when so much of your life is work, you have to have something outside of it. And family is always, the, I think, the number one answer. So, yeah. Great, Jim. Thank you. Well, uh, I want to thank you for spending your afternoon and, and taking a little time away from your boy with us. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. Oh. Hopefully you pass along to your students a little bit about us, too. We wouldn't mind having a couple new listeners yeah. out of it. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Excellent. Yes, I will definitely tweet this out. Okay, so Scott, did you, did you have any last words for Jim or questions before we let him go on his way and we wrap up another episode? Uh, no, just want to thank you, Jim, for joining us and uh, being part of this hospitality podcast. And uh, um, to return the favor, I'll be happy to uh, speak to one of your classes sometime. Excellent. We'll just uh, schedule it out there and uh, go in. And uh, I, I enjoy taking, you know, talking to classes. That's something I used to do, and I still do it. 
at the hotel too. I I still talk plenty in there. So cool. Excellent. Love to do it. <laughs> Excellent. I'll reach out to you sometime this weekend. I appreciate sure. it. Okay. Thank you, James. I appreciate it as well too. Taking time. I know Saturday where you're at as well. Yeah, absolutely. All of the above. We're all in Texas right now. <laughs> all right, Jim. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick <laughs> break. When we come back, Scott and I will wrap up the show. All right, and we're back. Scott, that was great. And, and you found him exclusively then through social media. You know this is not someone where either one of us have a, a history with. Right, right. This is uh, this is someone who I just um, contacted through social media, and, and uh, we just started chatting on on LinkedIn actually, and that's how it started. Fantastic. So once again, we're going to advocate what we always advocate: social media is key, not only for personal networking but for your hotel as well. Um, another thing, though, that that this this got me in the mood. I think. I'm going to work on a blog. Maybe I can get you and our listeners involved. I'd like to have it up in a week or so. So if you hear this, you want to respond real quickly. Um, but I, I wanted, uh, I was thinking that I would call it, uh, or, or the topic would be, the importance of listening and customer service. And you remember yeah. the iCare program. That, that was one of the, uh, the cornerstones of the iCare program is listen to understand. And uh, I just had an ex two experiences this weekend um, that reminded me on the positive side and on the negative side how communication can be key to a good guest experience or a bad guest experience. So uh, I think I'm going to talk about that. But what I, I want to ask from you and all of our listeners is if uh, you get a chance, go ahead and send me your stories about how listening to understand has either been a success or maybe a tragedy in your customer service experience at, at the hotel. Contact information is in the show notes, but you can always contact me at socialhotelguy at gmail.com. Um, however, uh, if you want to look for us on Facebook, we're at uh, facebook.com slash nextgen um, hospitality, and then you can look it up as well on YouTube. Scott, what is your YouTube channel's name? Um, easiest to find me at Scott Roloff, um, just search Scott Roloff on YouTube, and that channel's got the most. I, I started one also called Hotel Cast, but uh, okay. my uh, Scott Roloff account took off and had a number of hits, so that they, uh, they, they gave me permission to upload recordings beyond 15 minutes. So I've been using that one more because I've got that ability. Fantastic. Uh, so you don't have to listen to the podcast in parts anymore if you're watching it on a video. Yeah. And then uh, finally, of course, you can find us on Twitter at twitter.com um, at nextgenhotel. Uh, so contact us any of those ways. We'll have full information in the show notes. It, it, if you're wondering what I refer to on by show notes, if you're listening to this through some podcast aggregator or at feeder like uh, iTunes, uh, our home website is uh, www.socialhotelguy.com. And on that site, Along with the recording, you will know, we'll have you know pictures and links and things that we discussed during the show, so you can easily find those and as well as our contact info. So if you haven't gone to www.socialhotelguy.com, I would encourage you to do so. And uh, what, what, what do you think about that as a as a blog topic? Shh. You have to listen. Yeah, I I was just. Uh... I was just talking about customer service with uh, my employees the other day, and that was one of the biggest things that I was stressing was that you have to uh, you have to listen to the complaint or listen to the guests. That's one of the key things to uh, starting them to calm back down. And uh, it's number one, just in everything, really. Fantastic. And I think that's all that I've got. Scott, did you have anything else for today? Uh, no, just... Uh, Glad to uh, do another podcast. It's been a while, and uh, need to keep plugging away. By the way, I, I meant to ask you, uh, is your beautiful and talented uh, daughter still uh, overseas? Yep, she's still in Paris and, uh, and having a good time, and she'll be uh, uh, coming home in a while. But for now, she's uh, doing that and still doing her art. Well, we, I'm, I look forward to seeing some of her... Uh, 
her fantastic art influenced by the Parisians uh, when you posted on Facebook. So you just, just so you know, Scott has a life outside, too. So do I. I've got a Shih Tzu. That's my big news. I have a new baby Shih Tzu. Yeah. Oh, Scott boy. has an uh, incredibly talented daughter in Paris, and I have a new Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> so since, since we asked Jim about his personal life, I thought I'd throw that out there. But uh, in the meantime, again, um, thank you so much. We really appreciate the time you spend with us, and thank you for letting us speak to you about hospitality. 